It's the book of Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16, and it reads, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and I bring forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Lawyam La Yahawa by Hashem Yahushai by Hashem who does break a thumb. I want to say double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone who do teach and rule well. I want to say peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Say so shalom to the Akim and the Akwa that they're listening and learning. Lord, willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. In a land of other nations appearing like the other nations, but whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. So, this is the brother Yahweh Sop, and I'm coming at you with another lesson through the Spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bashim al Shah. This lesson has been inspired by um, brothers was going in on it, and then, you know, I came across it. I think the article, and I watched the video from um, some source. I can't remember exactly. But, uh, you know, the times that we're living in, you know, uh, prophecies are speaking, and we know it's only a few major prophecies left which are, um, you know, that man, the, the, the mandatory implement, the mandatory implementation of this, um, that CHIP or the Karagma or the Mark and um, World War III, which is going to go from um, boots on the ground to um, pretty much nuclear, you know. And we closer than what you think, you know, the scriptures talk about in the book of Peter, I can't think of exactly where it's at, but it talks about how the end is nigh, you know, meaning near. And, you know, you got American troops over in um, in the Middle East. You know, scriptures talk about um, the least of the flock th drawing them out, the least of the Edomites. And, you know, they're in the Middle East basically, um, you know, siding with and, and protecting and, and helping um, those Israelis, the Khazars, the fake Jews, the Jewish, you know. And the scriptures talk about how Russia's going to be a guard onto Iran because you got pretty much a proxy war going on between the Israelis and and, and, and Iranians, you know, and when you have proxy wars, usually you have bigger. Um, damn, that's three. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I just thought about that. You know, like literally you just had the Helene, you had Kirk and now you got Mil Milton. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. And they skipping letters too. Normally they go to the next alphabet. They're skipping. That's deep. And I've never seen them do that. But anyhow, it's lucky for the digression. But, um, when you got proxy wars, you got those bigger armies like, um, you know, Russia, which is backing, you know, um, Iran, you know, and you got America, you know, Babylon the Great, the Great Whore, um, backing those Israelis, because that's the America's the Israelis lapdog, you know, you know, showing you that, you know, America's fully engrossed with Satan, you know, but it says, behold, I have created the smith that blew off the coals in the fire, and the smith, you know, you got um you know iron smiths weapon smiths and you got um you know you had a brother when i was part of the camp you got a brother in the camp that's a copper smith you know these are men that's you know been gifted by yahweh by hashem yahweh shai yahweh meaning he is or he exists by hashem meaning in the name yahweh shai meaning he saves or he deliverer um with special talents to you know create you know the lord gave them um skills and you know just natural talent you know you know so um you know, they cre creators, you know, they visionaries, actually. You know, I was listening to a video by the elder, um, the beloved elder apostle, the bar, and he was going into a carpenter. You know, a carpenter can see what he's building before he builds it. That's a visionary, you know. And, you know, the prophets were likened onto seers, you know. The brothers can see the kingdom, you know. These scriptures give us hope, but we can see the kingdom. We can see Esau's downfall. You know, all these things that are looked at as like oh wow or please or terrify the the average joe or the average people on this planet we are excited about we get we get joy out of it because we understand these things must come to pass in order for our lord and savior our big brother yahweh shah mashiach who you people are going to call god and yahweh shah mashiach who you people are going to call jesus christ to return so um it says and that bring forth an instrument for his work. And that instrument is those ICBMs, which are labeled intercontinental ballistic missiles. It's very funny how, what was that? I think it was right before uh, Russia invaded Ukraine that they made, they signed a pact. They said they wouldn't use nuclear arms, you know, 
All these countries signed the pact said they won't use nuclear arms. To show you how in the scriptures of the book of Proverbs chapter 21, it tells you that the king's heart is in the, the hands of the Lord and he um, directed it whichever way he will, roughly paraphrased. The Lord is controlling these kings, you know. So it's not your will or what you hope don't happen. It's what's written. Because the scripture tells you the all everything that the Lord said he will bring forth from him, not make void, roughly paraphrased. I believe that's Isaiah chapter 55. So uh, it says, and I have created the waster to destroy. The ICBM, the intercontinental ballistic missile, the nuclear weapon, you know, is a waster. Do you know that a nuclear missile gets so hot that it can melt the very elements? Air is an element. It says that the, the, the elements will be burnt with fervent heat. So I'm going to play this, um, you know, fair use, fair use. Um, you know, I'm not making any money off of this copyright disclaimer. I'm just using things that's in this video to line up with scriptures. So, Lord willingly is edifying. It's lock here. Will Vladimir Putin go nuclear? The Russian president is making fresh threats. Today, he sent another warning to the West. Putin says if Russia is attacked, it reserves the right to respond with nuclear weapons. Listen to this. We reserve the right to use nuclear weapons in the event of aggression against Russia and Belarus as a member of the Union State. All these issues have been agreed upon with the Belarusian side, with the president of Belarus, including if the enemy, using conventional weapons, creates a critical threat to our sovereignty. Putin has made such threats before. So what's the big deal about this one? Why is it making headlines? Because Putin is redefining Russia's red lines. He has revised the country's nuclear doctrine for the second time in four years, and it sends a clear message to Ukraine and its Western backers. If Russia is attacked by any convention... That's pretty much what I wanted. So like they said, the, the difference between this and before, he's saying he defines what is the red line that these other nations will cross before he goes nuclear. You don't have to necessarily use a nuclear weapon for, you know, Putin to say he will use one. <laughs> so, you know, these are the times we're living in. People don't understand, you know, what's going on. But, you know, our job as, you know, the men that the Most High Yahweh Shem Yahweh set up to bring out and break down these scriptures is to pretty much break it down and explain it to him because like the, in the book of john it's talked about how yahweh shah said um if he wouldn't have come they would have no cloak for their sins or they would have a cloak for their sins but being that he came they have no cloak so you won't be able to say you didn't know because you know you got camps all around the four corners of the earth bringing out this truth you know you you marked <laughs> if you scoffed if you act like you didn't hear once you hear the words, that's our job. We don't got to get you to believe or convince you. Our job is to do the work by just bringing it out. So I'm going to bring out some scriptures because, like I said, nuclear war is all scriptural. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5. And it reads, for every battle of the warrior is with confused no. So like it, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel fire. You know, ancient wars, you had men on the battlefield. They didn't have guns. You know, the modern day sword is a gun. But back then you had swords made of iron and steel. You know, you know, you had men with iron, um, you know, armor on and whatnot. And, you know, and it was up close and personal. That's why the men were more mighty back then. You know, the scriptures talk about, well, I forgot. It's not in the scriptures, but. It's a saying I've always heard. My demon used to quote it a lot. It say each generation gets weaker but wiser. And we are not like our forefathers. Look how weak this generation is. You know, enough people are old enough and wise enough mm -hmm. to remember when you had, you know, organizations like the Black Panthers. And although that ended up being infiltrated and whatnot, you still had individuals standing up for what was right and what was wrong. This generation now, like, you got... These weak ass niggas literally, um, what's the word? Justifying snitching. 
You know what I'm saying? They popularizing snitching. It's got to be over with. It says, garments rolled in blood because it was up, per, up close and personal. You know, the scriptures talk about how, yeah, how was shy, who you people angry call Jesus Christ, is going to come back and his garment's going to be rolled in blood. That's how much killing he's going to do. Because contrary to what you believe, the Lord is not coming to save everybody. It says, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And, you know, those ICBMs, the intercontinental ballistic missiles, actually, you know, they got warheads within them. And, you know, they could bring, um, I forgot how hot a nuclear missile is. It's, a, it's almost equivalent to like, it's so much, it's, it's, it's kind of equivalent to how hot the sun is. I, I, I don't know the exact numbers and I'm not about to look it up. But trust and believe it's very hot. That's why the scriptures talk about the very elements being burnt up. You know, that means the basis of things. Everything starts from elements. It's from the very air you breathe to the very grass. And all this shit going to be burnt up. That's how much the Lord is not playing. This is the book of Second Peter chapter... Three, starting at verse nine, and it says, "The Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." And that's what we're going through now. You got the doors of mercy open because you got a grace period. You got an opportunity to repent and come back to the Lord. But, you know, I, I, I you know, you got to understand this truth is only for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Seminole Indians, West Indians and Haitians. God chose his people. And I realized through the spirit that these got to be the Lord's chosen people because the scripture tells you how stick necked and stubborn Israel is. Look at look at, for example, in the scriptures um, during Genesis or, or, or Exodus. When they was led out the land, the Lord delivered them, and then these motherfuckers got the scoffing, and the Lord killed their ass. He had them wander around till all of them fucking died. And it's going to be the same, but this time he ain't got all that time to waste wandering around. He's just going to let you get burnt up on his fucking side. Because a nigga is useless to everybody, including himself. A nigga? Just imagine when these ports really do shut down. What do you think a nigga going to do? A nigga gonna go into a female house that got kids. He ain't gonna be considering let me help this woman. He gonna be considering let me take from this woman because I know she can't defend herself. That's a nigga. Why everybody like to like promote the word nigga. Now, when you go to the etymology and, you know, at one point in time, we were called nigger. You know, that's in the scriptures. But the, 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 the modern day connotation of it, what the meaning of it, that's why you got to go into words and root words. That's, that's what our elders and apostles taught us, the meaning of words. Because even my demon, which is a fucking demon, you know, she even knew the power of words. She would walk around with a dictionary. But, you know, a nigga's not going to repent. But guess what? The Lord already knew that. So if you can't repent, then that, that, that show you that the Lord literally want to destroy you. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord, I, I, I challenge anybody to go look up what the day of the Lord is. The day of the Lord is mentioned a lot of times in the scriptures, but the day of the Lord mentioned in the scriptures doesn't line up with what the day of the Lord is to these pork chop eating pastors that tell you everything is good. You know how much shit going on in the world and you got these pastors telling people it's good. Still preaching posterity, pos prosperity. How the fuck <laughs> who prosper it? Everybody's suffering, everybody's struggling, everybody barely getting by. And it, the scriptures tell you that the most high God is sustaining everybody, but is he sustaining you for destruction or deliverance? But the day of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, but the day of, of Yahweh by Hashem, but the day of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, but Yahweh meaning he is or he exists by Hashem, Yahweh meaning he is. He exists or he to be by Hashem, meaning in the name Yahweh Shah, meaning he saves or he deliver the true names of the most high God and his son, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ. But whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. 
It says, but the day of the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai, will come as a thief in the night. It's going to come unexpectedly. Just like how they was talking about shutting down them ports. How many people looked at stupid? I'm telling people, I, out of about like 15 people, only two people knew about the situation. They better be. And how many people actually thanking the Lord that they didn't shut that shit down? Not very many, trust me. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall be, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Do you know elements? An uh, element is the air. It's saying the very air is going to be on fire, burnt up. This place is going to be completely destroyed. This place is going to become yo 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 hell, because hell is a condition. When you really go into, like, the people, the church lies so much, you know, like, when you go into the history of these churches, you know, like, that's why the Lord was calling them, even back then, you know, to the temple. He was talking about how it was corrupted back then. Why do you think John was living in the wilderness? John didn't even live. John was a powerful man considered a prophet, but didn't deal with the church because he saw the corruption. So he rather dealt in the wilderness. It says all these things going to be burnt up from the very air, the grass, <laughs> the earth. This place is going to be completely destroyed because like I said, hell is a condition or hell is the grave. When you go into the scriptures, there's no place in the scriptures where the most high God just has you burn forever. The scriptures call the most high God merciful. So where's the mercy in that? Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, meaning they all going to be destroyed or they're going to go away. What manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Knowing that this place is going to be destroyed, what manner of person should you, be, should you be? You should be seeking the truth. You be, should be repenting. Because if you can't spiritually feel something about to take place, this is Satan right here too. If, if you can't feel something spiritually about to take place, then... The Lord is not really fucking with you and he wants you not to see it coming. Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the most high, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What can melt the very air? You know, when they take pictures of the sun, you'll see the very smoke coming off the sun. That's how hot the sun is. So when you imagine that, think about it. They saying something going to be able to melt the elements. Air is an element. An ICBM can melt the, the air because the ICBM or intercontinental ballistic missile, a nuclear missile can actually, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the equivalence of how hot it is. They say it, it could burn almost to the a certain degree of the sun. It's the book of um, Revelation chapter 2. I mean, Salakia. Revelation chapter 11 and verse uh, 14. And it reads, the second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. When you go into the word woe, it goes into destruction or um, mourning. But destruction, the, the second woe is World War II. That's already passed. The third woe coming quickly is the third world war. Well, if you ain't aware, you got troops over in the Middle East helping those fake Israelites, but they, they, they don't call themselves Israelites. They call themselves Israelis because they letting you know without letting you know that they're not the real people. The real people are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Seminole Indians, West Indies and Haitians. Because they though the, the, those tribes fit the curses. The scriptures told you how to differ, differentiate who the Israelites will be because in the last days they wouldn't be called the Israelites. The scripture said that the most high God was going to make the Israelites a no people. Meaning you wasn't going to have a, 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 you know, like when they go into so-called black people, where do you come from? Answer me that. <laughs> or ask the white man that. The fuck? You know, you got to remember, you know, you had Africans that sold you to, you know, 
you know, Americans, the, the Edomites or the so-called white people. And do, don't get me wrong. You had Israelites doing it, too. You know, even over here in Babylon, the great a.k.a. America. But I met actual Africans and their spirit is totally different from, uh, uh, you know, right now you can go on YouTube. Right. And you can see people that live in Africa, but you could tell that they they Jake's. You could tell that they Israelites because they spirit. You know, the way that they move, they can rap, they can dance, they can do, you know. But if you ever seen some a real African, they ain't got no, 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 no charisma, no, 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 no rhythm, no, like, that nigga, you know, like, you like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nigga got a big ass bone in his fucking, in his jaw. And, and, and real Africans do not like niggas. Facts. The second woe is passed, and behold, the third woe coming quickly. The third woe is the third world's war. And like I said, you got boots on the ground. Or The third world war already started. They just ain't let y'all know yet. Why do you think they passed legislation talking about drafting women? So now we all equal. Just like you wanted. It's the book of... Uh, Second Ezra chapter 16. Starting at um starting at um eleven. Second Ezra 16 and 11. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushua shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. Um say you your arms is not long enough to bo um, box with the Lord. <laughs> so, you know, who is going to basically be able to turn these things away. Who's going to be able to stop the Lord from doing these things? Verse 12, the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof, the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, and before the glory of his power. Verse 13, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss, when they begin to be shot in the ends of the world. And the arrows, you know, it's basically a metaphor for those ICBMs, those intercontinental ballistic missiles. You know, they even made a movie called Broken Arrow. If you go watch that movie, it had John Travolta and I can't think of that other guy, Christian Slater, I think. And the whole premise of that movie was it was a stolen missile. They was trying to find a stolen nuclear missile. So the scriptures telling you, you know, in so many words, because Back then, they didn't know what an ICBM was. So they basically, um, you know, described it as things that they actually understood. You know, a sword, you know, an a arrow. It says, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. Because this is ultimately the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. Or Yahushah Mashiach, who you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Who sits at the right hand of the Most High God, Yahweh. The Father. That's Psalms chapter 110. It says, His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. And the plagues are those ICBMs. And pretty much, I just played a video, Putin saying, shit, if we feel threatened, we're going to shoot them bitches. This shit is not a game while everybody just living their best life. But you, they not though. Everybody ain't live. Everybody fucking struggling. And then motherfucker that's faking like that you living good. That that's just even more stupid. You like 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 the elder said, as a so-called black man in Babylon the Great, aka America, you should be the most angriest motherfucker on the planet. You don't get no respect. You always get the shittiest end of the of, of the spoon. The fuck, you know what I mean? Like even do the right thing, you still. That's why. And, and actually, why the men are not in the households, that's in the scriptures. That's in the Bible. That's a curse. So that's another way to interpret who are the children of the Most High God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 go into the blessings and the curses. And when you read those curses, they only fit particular nations of people. Mainly you so-called blacks, Hispanics, <laughs> Native Americans, similar Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. Like, if I remember David Chappelle made a joke about have you ever met a real Indian? But they do exist. You had a lot of them living in, 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 in Canada, Alaska. And guess what? They bigger niggas than niggas. 
Verse 15, the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundations of the earth. This place is going to be utterly destroyed. America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, as well as Israel. Because look at what they're doing over in the Holy Land. That's land was appointed by the Most High God to the children of Israel. And they over there having gay parades and said pig is kosher. How can you make something clean that the Most High God made unclean? Just because they said it's clean, it's written in the scriptures, it's unclean. You got Christians don't even know that shit. If, if you call yourself a Christian, first and foremost, you don't probably even know this. In order to call yourself a Christian, you got to be an Israelite. Because it tells you in the book of Acts, they didn't call themselves Christians to Antioch. I think it's Acts chapter 10 or 11. Don't even know what Christian means. These people are going to be like, again, I was hoping they wasn't going to start the fucking, <laughs> I said close these motherfuckers down. That's when people are going to actually, the scriptures talk about in the book of Isaiah chapter 26, when the Lord's judgments go out, that's when um, pretty much people, you're going to see righteousness. That's when people come to repentance, when people are, are being judged. That's when fear moves throughout the planet. The scriptures talk about the scourges being sent for amendment. Amendment means to change. These niggas is so much niggas. It's only like, for instance, when they locked down in 2020, niggas was up there. They locked down. Niggas got scared. They opened that shit back up. Niggas became super niggas. The Lord has no use for a nigga. And if it offends you, you might be a nigga. Verse 16, like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer return of not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. Ain't no stopping this because it's all in the scriptures. That would be, So you could pray for this fucked up ass, wicked ass, demonic ass place as much as you want. Do you know that they talk about P. Diddy and half them fucking celebrities y'all look up to was dealing with fucking children? And you want to keep this fucked up place going? They talk about P. Diddy is the mastermind and the biggest pedophile and you know, all these different things. But what happened to Jeffrey Epstein and Clinton, well, Hillary Clinton and Pizza Gay. What happened to all that shit though? Because you live in a society where the fucking devil rule it. So he doing, where do you think P. Diddy got all that shit from? You know, Clive, Clive um, Davis was his actual mentor. Clive Davis, <laughs> go, go look up, go, 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 go look up some of the interviews artists and entertainers did about him. Verse 17, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? So he said, woe is me, woe is me, because this is Ezra seeing this. And he's like, damn, it's going to be so bad. Who's going to deliver me? That's how you know you're going to need a savior. I don't give a fuck how much food you stacking, because if the Lord ain't with you, I'm going to come in your house and kill you and take your food. I don't give a fuck how many guns you got or how much kung fu you know. If the Lord ain't with you, motherfucker, like, hey, What's that? The Alamo, the Alamo, the, 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 the leader of the Alamo. I forgot his name. They show it in the movie. The head, the leader of the Alamo, he got killed by a kid. And he was a, a, a decorated, hardened soldier. <laughs> Proving that if the Lord ain't with you, it don't fucking matter who you supposed to be, what you got, none of that. Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of war and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. When you go to the word evil, evil is time, ill is bad. It's a compound word, meaning bad times. We in bad times and they about to get worse. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Verse 19, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for a minute. A scourge is like a whip. So, you know, like you get your ass whooped. That's supposed to correct you. That's what that's the whole point of getting whooped. The, the scriptures talk about the rod of correction. The scriptures talk about um, whooping a child. You know what I mean? Like, the fuck? The Bible say whoop a child. The Bible actually say if your child is disobedient, you're supposed to take him in front of the elders. If you done took him to the elders and he won't correct himself and they supposed to stone him to death. That's in the Bible. Verse 20, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be awful, always mindful of the scourges. 
proof proof in the pudding when I just brought up 2020. Niggas got scared when they locked that shit down. They opened that shit back up. Niggas forgot that they was locked down. So when they locked this bitch down again and they got all this, you know, they just passed all this legislation. You supposed to be in the house at a certain time. You ain't supposed to be outside. And they start fucking people up. Maybe that's going to, you know, did y'all even know that Trump said, basically, we need to purge. Trump said that on fucking natural on the TV. Where do you think he going to purge at? Y'all keep thinking this shit a motherfucking game. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. And they not. And that's how you know everybody not going to be saved. Everybody is not going to repent. Everybody, And that's all in the scriptures. So why should I give a fuck? I'm going to do my job because the Lord put the spirit on me that I see these things. And I know the scriptures say, woe is me, woe is me, if I do not prophesy. Because I'm going to get judged if I don't say it. So, you know, if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to um, repent and come back to the laws and statutes, laws and statutes and to your power, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, meaning he is or he exists by Hashem, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai, meaning he saves or he deliver, meaning or the true names of the Most High God and the Son, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ, or you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praise. All honor, all glory to call Loyum, by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone who do teach and rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Aqua out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this was edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations with whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say shalom. Till next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. Shalom, shalom, and kwam yasharala. Shalom, a Bible ball.